Hi, everyone. Welcome to the TimingResearch.com Analyze Your Trade, episode number 156 for April 13th, 2021. We are recording this at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. My name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of TimingResearch.com. And uh, today we'll be analyzing your trade ideas. So um, uh, I've put the list together and uh, um, I have uh, arranged for Norman Hallett to join us today. So you should be seeing his screen right now. And uh, the option professor is back to moderate. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to him. Okay, great. Thank you, David. And welcome everybody. You had a big uh, day in the markets again today. Market started to go on a pretty big run, particularly the NASDAQ. Uh, and uh, a lot of news hit the, here today. Uh, with the J&J &J vaccine situation and uh, some other news, but uh, the market uh, clearly uh, has a risk on type feel right now. Uh, we've got 15 great stocks for you to look at, and then we're also going to get into some commodities. Uh, with us today is uh, Norm Hallett, and uh, most of you guys know who Norm Hallett is, but he's going to uh, do a quick introduction here, Norm, and also uh, the, uh, your company, The Disciplined Trader. Yes, well, thank you, Option Professor, better known to me as Jim. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I've looked through these, well, a little bit about me. I, I focus mostly on the mental and emotional challenges that traders have. It's the back end of, of uh, really trading success and really the foundation of trading success. The fact that most people ignore it is really the reason most people don't do well trading. Um, today, I'm going to uh, talk a lot about technical analysis. I, I do it on a, in a very basic way. Um, I'm going to go, I've posted all the 15 charts here that, uh, and I've, I've taken a pre-look at them over the last hour, not an extensive look, but as we go through them, and Jim, I'm going to need your help because there's a number of, of, of uh, stocks here that, uh, that I think may be ready for options. You're much better at measuring premium and, mm -hmm. and uh, when is a good opportunity or not. There are banking stocks here. There's a, there's a, there's a, uh, pot stocks. There's a number of things here that I think uh, this was this is a very good grouping uh, that I think, um, um, you know, I was I was excited. And there's one in here that I'm so glad I do this, uh, this presentation, because every time I do, there's always one stock that that I didn't know about that I'm going to stay on top of. So um, that's my thing. I think I think I come from a little bit different angle than most people, although I'm I, I, I come from an area here technically of of pretty much support and resistance and trend lines and so on, Fibonacci. Um, there are certain ways that I take a chance uh, that others may or may not. There's other chances that I won't take that others will. So I'll try to explain all of that as we go through some of these charts. Sure. All right, well, we do have a great list. And the first one's gonna be a cybersecurity company called FireEye. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, looking at something that looks like it might be trying to break out to the upside, this is a very timely one to bring up, I think. Yeah, you know, and I guess I could have drawn this uh, this other line to complete this flag. Um, uh, I I drew an up uh, a, a, an uptrend line here. Uh, I also, um, whenever I see a spike like this in a market, I I draw my Fibonacci lines. And um, what's interesting here, what I kind of want to show you here is is when you draw a Fibonacci line, some would draw it here, some here, uh, but I like to draw it at the base of these, and I'll show you a little bit better example later. But as you can see, when we when we're hitting lines um, in a in a movement like this, so predictably, um, where where you have a bottom, an alternate. Um, th this is an area that hit that fifty percent line. Uh, you had the bottom, a rally up, another accumulation around the 50% line. I also want to mention that when you're dealing with Fibonacci, I used to look for exact stops. I wanted it to stop right on the line. But right. I've learned that that these are areas of resistance and support that um, that is a much better way to take a look at what's going on. The fact that, that we may go through a 50% line here um, is, uh, is, is not a problem. It, it doesn't throw Fibonacci out the door, even though 50% really isn't an official Fibonacci number. You can see that at all the Fibonacci lines, there seems to be some hesitation and accumulation. But the fact that we, we hit um, that 61.8 line came back up, uh, I agree with you. here, And we're, we're looking at a, a flag on the downside. This is yeah. something that looks like it may, uh, it, it, it has a high probability of, of moving higher. Of course, we had a, a nice breakout move today. Yeah. 
So, uh, for, and this is one of the ones I wanted to ask you about, Jim, on the op, from an option standpoint. Yeah, I mean, this would be a great time to look at the calls because you know the implied volatility has got to shrunk because we got a nice move down. In fact, this might be the last of the Mohegans because the tech sector, if you look at all the big guys, they all had a big drop in the first quarter. As I was saying on the other show, it was clearly because rates were running up at such a fast pace in the first quarter. Now, since that first quarter, we haven't seen 252 on the 30 year. You haven't seen 180 on the 10 year. And so I don't think it's coincidental that everybody who got negative on this stuff are out is now coming back in. And yeah. so if you look at this stock versus some of the other ones I just mentioned, the other ones have already taken off to the upside and have left the March, uh, the first quarter uh, decline behind them. This one just seems like it's getting on the horse. So uh, call options here and then adding to them if we broke 2150. I don't think that's a far-fetched idea at all. Yeah, and this is not the kind of, uh, uh, although this is a, a nice breakout when you, uh, when you draw your lines, it's it's not something that, especially because it's been behind the others in its category, uh, where the option premiums haven't exploded to the point where you could resist right. them. Uh, so many yeah. traders will take a look at something like this and wait for some kind of retracement because there has been a movement, I'm sure, in the option premium here. Um, but nothing compared to what it could be if it follows uh, suit with the others. So I agree with you, Richard. And, and if you're willing to uh, buy the stock, uh, selling a put underneath and using the premium to buy a call, yeah, it would not be a terrible idea either, as long as, again, when you sell that put, you're willing to put up the money if you get put stock. Yeah, I hope the seniors out there like me are listening. That's the way to do it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, anyway, so that's the story on FireEye. Let's move over to uh, Disney. Are those parks are going to start opening, and is that going to be helpful, or is this thing discounted at all? And if it breaks underneath that uh, 181 area, it's going to say sayonara for a while. Well, you know, this is just amazing, you know, that you would uh, you would be so deep in the uh, in the COVID situation. And this is all you could get as far as a um, a, a reaction from what what seemed to be a positive prospect. And um, I mean, there is a little bit of uh, I mean, I think you have to watch it just a little bit again. This because we've had such short ranges for a period of time. This could be an area where options uh, may be your best friend as far as uh, some of these call premiums, if you believe we're going higher. I drew this line. It extends back because my uh, my system uh, doesn't truncate the line on a horizontal line. But uh, you can see where this price right here is going to be a uh, looks like it's going to be a nice support here. Uh, hit it perfectly here, here and here. And we seem to be sneaking a possible test of it here. Uh, the fact that we've we've broken through this trend line here, but without any kind of conviction, uh, doesn't worry me to think that there may be some nice upside here. But uh, it could be a good option play again because of the lack of uh, of of uh, really uh, daily range in this. So, um, you would you would you see it that way, Jim? Well, I would see it that um, this could be an area of a replacement trade because you're looking at a stock that in November was at 110 and it went all the way up to 200. So you got a double on it. So obviously, if you're sitting on a double, you can do a replacement trade where you take some of your stock off, take that cash and put it in your pocket. And then you look to something like the uh, 195 calls for June and they're going for like five bucks or something like that. So if you take off uh, 95 and you put back in five, you mm -hmm. still got a position in case the thing takes off. But if think this thing ends up at 170 for whatever reason, you know, you'd be kind of happy that you uh, trimmed your position and replaced it with call limited risk call options. Yeah, here's the monthly. And sometimes when I when I see uh, you know moves like that in the daily, I take a look at the monthly uh, and, and get a little bit different perspective. And this this market has gone very far in a very short period of time. Um, and maybe anybody who wanted to get Disney Plus has gotten it, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, and I'm, I'm not so sure this is the best play. Uh, but but I, you know, I think if I was uh, if I was long here, um, I think there could be another move higher. But I. Yeah, there I, could be. That's why you'd replace them with calls or, you know, maybe sell some out of the money calls above the 210 area right. and just collect some cash. At least you have uh, or if you collected some cash on the above 200 area and threw a uh, out of the money, put it 180 in there just in case uh, they are uh, 175, just in case they blow it out. Because maybe, yeah, I mean, par maybe these parks opening up are not going to be that smooth. You don't know. And like I say, Disney Plus is no longer a new item. Mm -hmm, right. Right. So, which is which the, the, the latest revenue or future revenue stream. Uh, I mean, you're, you're looking at 
a, a bit of topping action here, but it's against uh, you know a line that I think should hold. So I'm not sure anything's going to happen here in the very near future, but I, I think this this may have some legs. So uh, there are you better choices it. here. Yeah. Um, this next one here, uh, you know, the whole world got short uh, this thing, and I I definitely thought this was like the dollar index. The whole world short on the dollar at eighty nine. Most likely thing, it's going to go the other way. Everyone mm -hmm. in the world got short bonds in Q1 to a real aggressive level, and the uh, thing cannot break 135. So basically, 133, 135 is your exit, and you play it from the long side, it looks like. What do you think? Well, you know, yeah, uh, you know, that's that's my first thought. And uh, but, but the good thing about it is the day of reckoning for this is going to be likely this week. Um, I, I kind of drew, you know, and we've talked about this before off the air, Jim, about how um, bonds tend to move in one direction until further notice, right. uh, you know, and, and what you get are accumulations like this along the way. Uh, and then movements down, more accumulation, another jump down. And the jump down usually happens quickly like this or like this where you, and then we have the sideways action. Right. Uh, this is a nice, this is a, a nice vertical line. It did, did take two weeks to get here, but again, accumulation. This is a little bit short of fall, you know, that we've seen, although it's not inconsistent with what's, what's and, but yes, we're holding in this 135 area, but the length of accumulation is at a tipping point now, I think, where yeah. in the next, next few days, we should see something, but Again, the fact that we're, you know, uh, even with this kind of bond movement, the, the length of these candles don't really uh, don't really reflect um, the, the strength of some of these moves because you're, you're, they don't trade 24 hours here as right. you would in a normal bond chart. But um, the daily range has been very short. And so I do think there is, uh, you know, be able to take long positions here uh, against uh, um, an area here, an area of new lows, I think could be an interesting play for those that are looking for a response. I don't see a turnaround, you know, no. uh, but I, I do see a no. counter move that, that, uh, uh, frankly, I was expecting it here, but, you know, uh, this, this would be good enough, you know, and you had another short risk here. So, yeah. And I, I this right here, these red lines, and this is Hema Reddy's work, who um, I'm a big fan of. This is the RSI. And you can see how we seem to be playing between these red bands. This uh, this this band here between 50 and uh, 55 and 65 is a band that tend, generally tops out in momentum in a bear market, and generally uh, it, it will hold. Um, it'll it'll become oversold in a bear market and give you a rally in this area. So I'm I'm a little bit cautious about believing this is going to be the spot. Uh, because we're we're yeah, you know, no. I'd, I'd rather see it yeah. coming in in here. Yeah. I just don't think I think we could stay in this area for a long time, but yeah. we'll see what happens. Yeah, 180 was the high on the 10 year, uh, 252. And uh, all I was thinking is, is it's going to consolidate here? So maybe you could drip down. Yeah. You know, they just threw a PPI number, which was mm -hmm. up one percent. And then they just threw a CPI number that was up two point six percent. So if those numbers are not going to scare these people, you know, and uh, Tom, Dick and Harry has hedged their bond portfolio, which means you probably got a, a very large amount of people short and with puts. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like you know, the dollar, I don't think the dollar is in a raring bull market, but it's not going to go to 85 right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the bond market here is not going to go to 130 right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the only thing I was thinking. Yeah, as far yeah, as no, some I kind think... of rip roaring rally, I think that's uh, dr uh, that's beer talk and that's crazy. Yeah, no, I think so. And, and you know, when I, when I see a market like this, I mean, I pretty much know because I'm in the bonds a lot uh, that, you know, you pull back to a it looked very it looked like it couldn't go down much further. Uh, from a, from a, a daily chart standpoint, but when you look at the monthly, you can start to see that um, that there is some you know, there is some risk to a long trade here. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. It, it has no some legs, it. you know. Yeah. Uh, the big so. thing doesn't, but Norm, do you think like the the market is now saying more like the Fed? Hey, listen, inflation is going to be transitory because as soon as we have the horses run out of the barn, they're only going to run for a while, and then they're going to get tired, and then they're going to start walking again. So the GP, GDP numbers and the inflation numbers, yes, you're going to get some uh, spikes in them, but they are going to go back to the mean at some point, and that's what the Fed has been saying. And I think the market's saying, you know, hey, you're probably right. We're in, we're in the first quarter, they were saying the Fed is wrong. 
Yeah, and look, we're right at this area right here where we should get some support. Yeah, I, I, I think you know it's really just a, you know it's it's in the the uh, the ravages of inflation uh, because of all the spending that we're doing, we're about to spend on infrastructure against um, the jobs that'll be created and the and the uh, and, and you know the usage of some of that the earnings back in, in the economy. So we're having you know this is a tug of war right here. Oh yeah, and, and um, you know it's going to be very you know for a trade be very interesting for a trader to see. Uh, if you're an owner of bonds, you know I took advantage of that big drop recently to pick up some tax freeze. A lot of people are looking that way mm. because of uh, the tax increases that are coming. So you know I definitely like picking up the higher yields when they were down, and mm -hmm. uh, you know at least when you're holding bonds and the market's stable, you don't go to bed with white knuckles. You know what I mean? Right. No, I hear you. Um, because in the first quarter, you know, people with long-term bonds, they lost 13 to 15% on their money. And when people mm. buy bonds, they're not looking for that kind of risk. Yeah. You know, well, this next thing is SI, whatever the SI is. I believe uh, this is a, a real estate uh, conglomerate type thing, isn't it? Um, I, I've heard of it before because uh, somebody has brought it up before. And um, I think it has something to do with... Um, well, I'm going to find that out real quick. So let's look at the chart and I'll look at it. Yeah, and then there. worry about that and what the hell it is later. Exactly. But, uh, but you know, you're, you're seeing here, I know that that here in South Florida, um, you know, real estate values have really, um, you know, taken a, taken a jump. And, um, you know, this, from a technical standpoint, again, many of these charts are at turning points. This could be a triple top. It could be, but, but, but if you, if you, Break through a triple top. Sometimes that can leave all of this behind, and you can move from something like one sixty eight to three hundred. Um, so now this thing, uh, this thing, real quick, Norm uh, has to do with uh, financing and doing banking uh, with uh, crypto. So obviously, this oh, is being, this is crypto. That's yeah. Right. This yeah, is this is yeah. the uh, bank that deals with um, you know uh, innovative financial infrastructure solutions and services for the digital currency industry. So obviously, Coinbase coming out today is obviously uh, dragging it up, like it uh, dragged up Tesla today, and it dragged up everybody else. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know. I, I we've talked about this before. I won't bore those that have heard it, but other to, other than to say, some pretty smart people about ten years ago were saying that, that that crypto was here to stay, and that there would be resistance in the breaking or the the real uh, launching part would be when uh, banks and credit card users and so on uh, they would start to move into just like. Uh, uh, the um, uh, the Arab Emirates have moved into al alternative energy. They were some of the biggest players in wind and solar energy. Uh, so banking and some would, would look at some of these cryptocurrencies and start to employ them in their portfolios and uh, you know looking to the future and um, uh, and shed some of those those um, thoughts that it's all for drug money and so on. So I think you're seeing that. And what I just said before may very well be, and if you let your fundamental thinking creep into a chart, which you really shouldn't do, you let it go. But it, maybe you, you keep it on your watch because of that. Um, you know, this could be the beginning of a very, very big move and making this look like, uh, you know, one third the way up. So, um, you know, it's it's so you, do, you still have that peak at 180 that needs to be dealt with, I guess. huh? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you, you, you try to get to it here. You, you try it again here. Um, and I don't think that test is over. This indecision is, is really what we're talking about here. When you have a doji here uh, or so this is a very small spinner. Um, you know, th this is this is something that um, usually results in a move that 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 comes very very soon, one way or the other. But mm -hmm. you know, uh, again, you know, this is the kind of thing where if you get two or three do these these dojis in a row, uh, auctions could be something very interesting uh, because it could cool yeah, off. If, some it, of those if it's not going to take out that one eighty, you know, this is a nice place to do some hedging because the two hundred day moving average on this thing is at fifty six. Mm -hmm. So obviously some of the uh, fundamental rules with these cryptos are thrown out the window, but I'm a believer they give you 30 and 50% drops all the time, really. I yeah. mean, here you, this year alone, this baby's gone from 180 down to 100. That's your buy. Goes back up to 180, comes back down to 120. That's your buy. So if you buy it on dips, you know, um, it takes a lot of the uh, fright out of the market. Uh, but uh you know, clearly this area up here, it's either going to blow out through 180 or we're going to have another rendezvous with a correction, maybe. Yeah. You know, you know, what started me in this industry was uh, was the when the Hunt brothers uh, uh, cornered silver and, and uh, everybody who bought silver at ten dollars and saw it at 50 and their option premiums 
went 20 times. They, yeah. they, um, they, they didn't want to let go. Right. And it would have been nice to have something like this to short again. In other words, I guess my point here is that if you're holding crypto type assets and you've got big, big gains, this is one where you want, may want to consider a short position to hedge as far as an option is concerned. If you're, if you're, if you're that kind of person that doesn't want to let go and take profit in some of the others, because this one has been resisting some of the, um, well, it, it's been a pretty good move, but you can see how over the last couple of months, it's been resisting the, what's been going on with crypto, uh, um, you know, from at least the 40 to 60 level. Um, it's a service company versus a uh, originator of crypto. So that's why it probably doesn't have quite the bang that crypto. Right. You know, no, that's a good point. You know, um, but anyway, yeah, that's an exciting stock to keep an eye on. And here's one right in Las Vegas called Riot, which I'm proud to say I didn't buy any of. And it went from 60 cents to whatever it is today. Yeah. And I wish they would have uh, dropped by their office and listened to their rap. And look at that. Look at this. Uh, almost disappearing act uh, mm -hmm. when, when compared to what happened. This um, And this looks like it's ready for another move, doesn't it? Oh, um, yeah. I mean, it looks like it wants to go after that 70. You know, it's, it's um, I, I will caution people, though, that, uh, that many times when you get a penance like this, they'll, they'll, they'll try to take you out by breaking the wrong way. Um, if, if you're not in this and the market goes, comes lower, and challenges these lows. Look for a place to get long because uh, th this pattern I've noticed in recent years likes to shake people out mm -hmm. and, and then uh, continue higher. But uh, we're getting some um, uh, we're getting some real belief here that uh, I mean, look at this accumulation after a huge move from that, 20. That 50 number looks like a good line in the sand. Yeah, it, it, it definitely does right in this area. Uh, and 4850. Yeah. 10 bucks yeah. lower than it is. So you're like, well, yesterday was at that area. The darn thing's up about eight bucks. So it was right around 51, 52 yesterday. Yeah, it's it's very, uh, very attractive. Uh, very attractive. But again, you know, you have to put on your big boy pants there. Or big girl pants. And, you, and, and there's 41 million shares traded that are putting on those pants today. Wow. So this is not uh, a mom and pop uh, volume, that's for sure. Uh, we're getting a lot of people asking about some stocks that have really moved. Til Tilray. Yeah. What's that? T-L-R-Y? T-L-R-Y, yeah. What, that's a, uh, that's what... a pot stock that was getting nailed on the downside yesterday, down 12%. Today it is up 6%. So if you like uh, volatility, you're in the right ballpark. Yeah. yeah, there's one I'll show you later in case we don't get to it. Medmen, M Medmen uh, that looks a lot like this right now. This is what you kind of want. MedMen is the one that's heavy in real estate, um, as far as uh, you know, grabbing retail outlets and so on. Uh, but if uh, if if this uh, if the pot stock craze becomes you know reality and it looks like it's uh, beginning to, uh, you, you want to look for ones that haven't broken out quite yet. So. Um, you know, the states want to get into gambling and pot because of the tax revenue. And I'm just wondering if the public wants to get into those things as much when they hear about Social Security numbers and filing returns that goes right. over the activity here and all kinds of stuff. You know, it's a lot different than when you're going through a bookie or buying it on the corner. Yeah, no question. And, and I mean, look at, look at this kind of movement. I mean, really, the question now is, is uh, whether, uh, you know, how, how soon um, it'll be uh, powder will be declassified as a uh, class one um, drug or whatever that classification is so that you cannot um, open you really it, any yeah. FDIC bank. You know, you, none of these companies can open uh, accounts with them. Um, oh, that's right. And, and to be honest with you, uh, there's quite a few that don't want to play that game already. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, but, but when that worm turns, that opens all of this up. Uh, you know, it gives it the legitimacy that uh, that that um, um, Bitcoin is now enjoying. So, um, uh, you know, this is a stock that had, has had a better day, but I would expect accumulation before another move up on this. Yeah, on a, on a one month graph, you know, it has uh, hit a little spike low today around 16 and it has turned uh, one of the shorter term averages up as long as it stays above about 1750 or so. Yeah. Um, but that's extremely short term focused. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the thing is, uh, in today's market, there's a lot better looking 
opportunities. Do we have a divergence on the chart uh, with Tilray as far as the RSI, where you've made a new low here? Uh, is it uh, is it a higher RSI than when that low was made? That let's could be at least, look. yeah. Let's take a quick look here. Um, is up here. Uh, I've got to format that to a nice white color there for you. Uh, yeah, I mean we're we're coming to the point where it starts to look interesting, but again, that's yeah. not. A but there's not a bunch of it. There's not a divergence there to write home about. That's for no, sure. no divergence. Yeah. Uh, but we're we're coming here to these. I just that, I just thought sometimes when that happens, it's a pretty good signal. Right. But that's not happening here. All right, let's go overseas now. We're going to go to the developing markets, the emerging markets, EEM. Hang on one second. Uh, I'm not sure why I, can, why I can't get rid of that. Can you see that horrible? Uh, I see Pluto move away from the ground, uh, the window. Blue, yeah, blue, I'm blue. not sure what. Yeah, it can maybe it's. I think it's starting to fade. Okay, that's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> what about EEM? Yeah, EEM, and this guy, uh, you know, uh, is all about the emerging markets, which, uh, you know, has these have not moved yet. But I have uh, my opinion is is that uh, with the uh, trade deficit going through the roof, well, who imports to us is these developing countries, so they should be making pretty good money in the months ahead and the years ahead. So, uh, you know, I think there's a future here, but it seems premature, maybe. Yeah, I think so. You know, this is one that you want to keep on your watch because yeah, is, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you there, and um, I, I kind of like the fact that uh, we're adhering to to Fibonacci. I wanted to point out something here. You know, I, I'm going to call it. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a fan of of uh, what do they call it? Chart fitting or or uh, curve fitting. Um, okay. But I originally drew the line from here in Fibonacci, and it didn't give, you know, I was wondering, should I draw it from here or should I draw it from here? Sometimes mm -hmm. you, uh, to draw it in the right place, you know, it, the, the Fibonacci, I, I need a guideline when I trade. I need to have a track to run on. And, you know, this is a much smoother look. Uh, by starting my line here. So I'm just saying, if, if you see something, this, is this part of this accumulation and the beginning of the move, or is this where you should measure? Oh, from, I got you. From here? So you're, you're saying because the market down here really hadn't established a low, and then when it comes up and pulls back, right? that is really the low of the move. Here down at the bottom really wasn't the, you know, you could debate where it really started from. You're right, and I I think I and a jury of my peers I I think can, I think I'd win the I'd win the argument here because look look all along the way I mean you have uh, tests of the you know the Fibonacci levels all the way through in any event I just wanted to bring that up but as far as yeah. this chart is concerned yeah you, you know this is this is really topping action mm -hmm. uh, but it's topping action in general but the more the more um, immediate is bottoming action. So it's it's resulting in, in in this sideways move, and I agree with, we may see more of it. But I would not if if I if I was long this and I've held, I would continue to hold, um, um, I, I, at least for a break uh, through here. Right. Uh, because you're not looking you're looking at fifty. You're not looking at a looking lot. At, although these yeah, buck, kinds buck and of, a half. Yeah. these kinds of ETFs tend to command a lot of money. So even one and two dollar moves can can result you know, in a, a big dent. So depending on the size of your holdings, I think yeah. you've got to adjust what I'm saying. But I do think, I think with you, um, you know, there's a lot of anticipation with some of these emerging markets about COVID and will they get over the situation and so on. So yeah. I think that's, that's really the hesitation. I think we're becoming a little bit more of a, you know, under, I'm not going to get into politics one way or the other, but, no. but the Democrats seem to be more, you know, we are the world people. Yeah, um, well, we got, we got a situation where we got the vaccine cooking here and by Labor Day, Europe should have their act together. And then by Christmas, these guys should. So if this might be, this might be a Q3 or Q4 mover uh, as opposed to a Q2 mover. I agree. And I think it's something that you feel good about when you when you when you have in a diversified portfolio, I always like to have something like this in there, some kind of emerging market 
um, exposure, you know, even if it's only two to five percent, you know. And a lot of this has to do with uh, China. So now that ba- Baba's uh, fine is behind them, and uh, maybe the Chinese market is settling down a bit, and maybe in the second half of the year it will come on because their economic numbers are not bad. Their exports are fabulous. They're importing a lot. They're buying a whole bunch of uh, iron ore and copper and everything. So, it's, it's you know, so it just seems like the. Corn. It seems like the government's just trying to, you know, calm down everything. Mm-hmm. And then after it calms down, you know, maybe it gets legs again, you know? Yeah. And I, you know, they're buying so much grain now too. That's supporting those markets to record mm-hmm. highs. Yeah. As we were, I think we were on with Jake the other day, who was, uh, you know, big, can say, thinks it can go even higher. Yeah. Um, well, let's try this alley, A-L-L, that's Ally Bank, I guess. And that's, uh, I guess it's uh, online mostly, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I'm not, who's going to say it? Me or you? It's right up my, it's a bank. It's a banking stock. Yeah, yeah no, it's a banking stock for sure. Yeah. But yeah, it's online. No, it's okay. Right up my alley. This is, um, I, I started with the monthly here because, you know, this is, you know, this gives you perspective about, you know, we're about, we're, we're a good 70, 80% above the, the, the highs over the last, um, you know, since, since its infancy. Um, and, you know, you wonder where this is going to exhaust. Um, I, I did want to point out a particular pattern right here that I always watch for when I look for breakouts. This is, um, let's see if I can spread this out a little bit. Yeah, see this right here is a spinner. Um, a doji would be perfection. A spinner, a, a spinner with a very small body like this is shows you uh, indecision in the market on a monthly basis. And, and I, I think that's significant when it's followed by a move through a significant moving average. In this case, it's the eight bar exponential, but it could be the nine and some of the other ones that I use. But this particular pattern where you have a, a indecision followed by a breakthrough uh, in a, uh, on the other side of, of a important uh, EMA, um, usually leads can lead and a high probability to something like this, and it mm-hmm. and it did here. Here's another. Well, this is not quite as as. Here's one where it fails. But mm-hmm. when you take on something like this, you have to watch your uh, your um, your risk because you're putting. I put my uh, my stop below, and if we we close a couple of times below without hitting it, I get out anyway. But this usually, if you don't see the initial move higher. It's usually a time to exit, but here's another. This 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 indecision isn't quite as 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 bad as uh, as indecisive, and so I, this is not a signal. But I've been showing you this in a couple of other charts. But I mean, we've we've come a long way in this. This is the I got you the monthly. Let's look at the daily. Uh, I only brought the monthly so that you can. I mean, this looks like it's been going up forever, and and it really has. But it's come from a place you really don't even see here. Um, you know, this is this is a uh, it's a strong it's a strong chart. Um, I'm not sure. You know, I wouldn't play with it because it's it, it could be exhausting soon. But how's the RSI look as far as diverging yeah, on that new high? It's another good uh, question. Hang on. They make it so cumbersome. Kind of a hard time to initiate a new position, but if you're in there, I guess you could either do sit tight, trim hedge yeah well, it looks like we're hanging and again we're going to get a lot of bank earnings this week and i'm sure they should be making some money but how much has been factored in we're going to find out yeah and just like i was uh you know I, this looks like we may be a little bit sideways just like a little, we- little divergence there though huh yeah, there's a little bit of divergence here, which could give us a bit of correction, but I believe right. we'll probably hold here. Just in the same way a bear market tends to run between these red lines, according to HEMA, the, a, a bull market will tend to run to this where we get support uh, between 40 and 50 and we get overbought in the 80, 90 area. So uh, this is, um, I mean, we're, we, we've had this divergence really right from the beginning of this move. Um, and well, you didn't know it till here, till it's it stopped here. But I'm I'm just uh, I I believe whatever you know this this could be sideways. It's telling me sideways, 
But the fact that we're still playing between uh, HEMA's momentum areas and bull bullish market, I don't, I don't expect this to be corrective action more than, you know, two or three dollars, you know, maybe maximum into this area. Right. Where you'd have support. And of course, we have a lot of accumulation here. So, um, yeah, it's a good idea of checking the um, checking for divergence. Um, it may hold yeah, because, back. you know, that, that might tell you, you know, we're a little exhausted here and, and you know, they're going to come out with these earnings and uh, let's say they're great. Uh, but the market feels that they've discounted a lot of the move, then you could get a correction. If the market and they and they start guiding much, much higher from where they are, then of course you could take out the 48 and be on your way. And then but, of but course, me, heaven, heaven, for, you, heaven forbid they miss, this place would be going on fire. Yeah, yeah let, let me ask you, the, 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 when you see a chart like this and, and you're looking for, and you've analyzed it as we do, whether we're right or wrong, we're looking for um, a, a possible pullback or a sideways movement that would cool uh, would, would this be a place to choose a call premium that you would love to get filled, put your limit order in and um, and, and see if you can grab it during the sideways or, or corrective move? Well, I mean, you know, the selling uh, puts at a high price is not Phi Beta Kappa. You're signing up to buy stock, right? So if this market has a correction, they're, they're going to be delivering at, the, at your door as much stock as you want. Gotcha. So, um, you know, up here, it really looks more like replacement trades where you take some money off the table and just put some call premiums on there just in case it goes to 52 without you. Right. Uh, or, you know, uh, a trim and see if you can get something on a, on a drop or, you know, see, the thing is, if it breaks out to the upside, you know, you don't want to do too much covered call writing because it could take you right out if you think there's a ton of potential here. Of course, this thing has already come up quite a bit. So, uh, you know. How many people have done refis already? And, you know, um, uh, the, the uh, household people tend to be deleveraging, not releveraging. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, again, this doesn't go up like this because no bullish news is factored into the price, you know? Yeah, I mean, you see a little bit of cyclical action. You see a, a, a test here, a test here, and maybe a test in here. But, uh, hey, that's why they call you the option professor. Yeah. That's, well, uh, I mean, yeah. You know, like I say, it's a, it's a tough call because it's an extremely strong market, so you don't want to leave it. On the right. other hand, at some point in time, you either have to stay with it, and if it corrects, you say, God bless it, I'll, I'll hang in there. Right. But if you're trying to manage your equity, you know, this is a point in time where you at least start pricing out things. And at least give, give yourself an idea. If you're selling out of the money call, uh, what am I uh, giving up if it goes up? Will I roll my position if it goes up? And if I get this premium, should I just hold on to this premium or should I take it and buy a put just in case right. this thing goes the other way? Because, you know, uh, this Alley Bank is not J.P. Morgan, right? Right. No, absolutely. It hasn't yeah. been around anymore. Um, what is it? Go, Expedia? Yeah, Expedia. Uh, yeah. This is a darling of the uh, reopening crowd. Yeah, look at that. Uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's a nice, uh, you know, it's it's uh, sharpened. It's it's it's. Uh, upward trend from here to here, which is always a very good sign. Um, but I, yeah, yeah, what are you thinking about? Like, uh, I just got something in my email about uh, uh, James. Uh, here's a hundred dollars to encourage you to travel. Yeah. So is, does that mean uh, they're they're doing good promotions, or are they kind of thin on business and they have to do these promotions? I mean, you know, I'm always cynical. You know, what are they giving me a hundred bucks to uh, go on a trip for if there's so many people signing up for trips, right? Right, right. And my brother, who, who hates, uh, uh, what's the, um, uh, where you rent to somebody else's yeah. place? Uh, Airbnb. Airbnb. Did it for the first time, and he's complaining about it already. Um, <laughs> I, but, I never uh, got that anyway. You, you're going to some guy's home who happens to rent it out. I don't know. You know, I, this part of me that believes this market could be ready for a correction, and I'll tell you why. You know, I'm seeing, the, remember I, I mentioned to you, as far as hesitation, my uh, you know, here's that formation here that I don't like to see near the top of the market. Uh, you know, for a, from a trader's standpoint, this is a more short-term short look. My stop would be right above here, and we we were get, getting hit. We have another form of it here, and another right here. We have a doji uh, followed by a movement down, even though it's not grand. We're, but you're almost still playing off this peak. You still haven't taken out uh, what's happening here, and. You know, to, to be short a market like this with a very short stop in this area, um, I think for somebody who is, who is a speculator, uh, they could look at some shorter time frames and, um, and, and possibly grab some, some money in here. 
Um, again, I, I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit risky because we're, we're in a, you know, they're probably better trades, but mm. uh, I, I see a tendency here to be rolling over. I, I think, uh, you know, if I had to predict, you know, on one of your Monday shows up down or in between, I'd, I'd be saying sideways on this. Yeah, this thing peaked at 107. It came down to 165. So that's your one move. Mm -hmm. Your two move is back to 180. It doesn't take out 187. So your three move, if it takes out 165, is going to probably be a pretty good drop. Yeah. So you got so, a one, two, three possibly occurring here, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. But was, uh, when they open it up at uh, 205 tomorrow, we'll obviously be yeah. uh, wrong. That's right. <laughs> and I'll, right. And I'll, I'll say, I'll think of something else. Yeah. That's right. Well, what well, about uh, DocuSign? I've been doing a few of these with a few accounts that I'm opening up and doing this. And oh no, this is uh, this is uh, this is this is physician's the, realty. Is, yeah, oh. physicians realty. You know, yeah. and I I marked this up all along the way. I mean, I think they. You know, when I look at anything in the real estate area, I look for. I think the, I think I saw this is paying a five to five percent dividend. 4. Yeah, about five percent. You got yeah. a fifty eight PE ratio. So you know, you know, to be of course, I like to you know buy them when they're a little bit lower, but um, mm -hmm. but but still, you know, you're you're talking about a pretty tight range, even I though it's so. like it's wild. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to show the traders in you. This is that, uh, and I, when I when I see a range that's as pronounced as this, and it happens often in stocks like like real estate stocks and mining stocks when they're flat. Um, th this hesitation, this is the eight bar exponential moving average. When you have a hesitation followed by a movement higher, um, you, you get a, a, a movement up. And what I like to do is I like to play this in two different ways. I like to buy multiple positions, take out half at a spot at the at the initial move and let the other one ride if it's going to ride. So here would would have been and when I take my spike, I move it to break even. I move the other the rest to break even. So I would have had a spike here without a break even. Here's another one here, a indecision followed by a big move up. Now I may not have gotten into this because you've got to measure your risk because your your stop is down here. But if you did, um, you you would have had your um, you would have had your your, your short or your the scalp position out in this area because you're you're measuring this and when i say a spike you're, you're looking for something equal to the body so th there's a anyway it, it, this hesitation followed by the move lower can sometimes signal it's another one here what you want to do is take it from the top of the range or the bottom of the range this is not even though this is something that we've just described the fact that we're in the middle of the range it's, this is not something that you would take right. uh, this may be uh, this definitely would be. Um, what you're saying is this looks like a dead stock that is basically an income producing stock. That's but what correct. you're saying, but what you're saying is, is having said that you have a defined $2 range there and mm -hmm. you could have made money in that range about seven times in the last, uh, six months. Yes. And, and I did want to point out when you get a tail here, uh, I give, um, uh, I don't, I generally don't need as big as a move through that eight bar. And you can see this just made it through to give me the signal because I, I consider uh, shooting stars and hang, hang men uh, are, are pretty strong indicators. So you have a lot of, you have a big indicator here, a big one here. Yeah. Um, you have one here, but again, you, you'd be taking it near the top of the range. So you wouldn't be taking it. So I'm just saying, watch for this kind of a signal. I, I, I saw it a lot here. You're playing with a nice dividend. I mean, this is a great stock to be in. Uh, I never heard and, of it. And, and, and to trade, frankly, because, I mean, yeah. if you can find a trained seal like this, uh, you're yeah. very lucky if you're trading. And this thing does a million and a half shares a day. So you could go in there with some size and they could probably absorb it pretty easily. Yeah, we're going to maybe I'll write a paper. What's up, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> But I think uh, people people are in this thing. They're they're going for the five percent. They're not looking for a home. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. Uh, uh, GLD. Yeah, you know I, I've been trading gold since 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 that big move with the Hunt brothers in uh, January of nineteen eighty, um, and I, I gotta say that th this recent lack of movement in in gold has really surprised me to some degree. Uh, you know, lack of really coming down strongly or I've turned here again to uh, this is the um, this is the monthly chart to give you kind of a perspective um, of this uh, you know we're, we're challenging the top 
but we're we're really hanging around uh, an official um, Fibonacci uh, point after this recent um, this this recent monthly move here, this recent drive. We've come down and we're again we're playing with this. I, I I'm looking for a place to go long. I just haven't yeah. found it yet. Yeah, I'm hoping uh, this. We end of the month with a hesitant. Yeah, I'm looking for one of those signals that I've just described. Let's look at the daily. Yeah, because you got a double low there at around 165 area. So until it really gets above that, and on the gold itself has uh, that same kind of formation with 1775 being about the area. Mm -hmm. So if you got above 1775 in gold and you can get this baby to trade through 168, then I think you might be uh, onto something. Yeah, I, I think so too. And, and, um, this is a little bit tougher place to apply that hesitation with the acceleration because of the fact that, um, you know, I, I like to do it a lot more in the, uh, uh, in the commodities and the stocks with the high, uh, um, with, but these gaps make it a little bit tough. Uh, although you can't escape what we're seeing here that you mentioned this double bottom. Um, and we're, we're playing, playing right here to whether we want to go higher or not. I mean, you saw what happened in silver, which is another market that one needs to watch if they're watching gold, where we saw, you know, a 50 cent move down one day and today up 50 cents. So, uh, the metals can't really decide where they want to go. Now, if you were Jake, you'd be, you'd be, uh, uh, Jake would very referring to Jake Bernstein, you'd be having your eye on platinum a little bit more than even gold and silver. Um, but, you know, copper is another one that I think we all need to watch from a metal standpoint because uh, with the infrastructure build and the move for copper, there's another one here that we'll be taking a look at that, that, uh, that mines iron ore that I think may be a good opportunity coming up in another chart. Do you think anything, you have any other thoughts on gold? Well, just here, um, if you go to a, a long-term monthly graph, you notice that we started the move from the 110 area using that concept that you said, don't use the ultimate low of 100, but use the first low after that, which is, uh, so you've got a, a $85 move. Mm -hmm. If you take 38% off of that, you're at about 160. So it's not mm -hmm. coincidental that we've stopped here. Mm -hmm. And so if 38% is all you're gonna get on the pullback, then we're here. So mm -hmm, yeah. I think you break under uh, 160, and if you break under 1675 on gold, um, I think that opens up a Pandora's box. If not, you know, this could be the place uh, for the rest of the year that could be the low. Yeah, see, that's, uh, I, I agree with you. But, you know, you got to let the market tell you. Oh, and, yeah. Um, and, and I um, am. But the longer we hold this, the better, right? I think so. You know, I don't think I don't think I'd be concerned if I were long gold. I think you've reached some that I mean, you know, you're looking at a top top action here, a breakthrough, a top and a failure. There's reasons to believe there's a short side that, that may be coming. But I, I think you got to wait for the market to tell you what to do. So I, I don't think there's much of a move here in uh, action yet in gold to, to take. You know, you refer back to the big move in the early 80s. Uh, the fundamentals of that move are right here. And that is where inflation gets well above the real interest rate. Yeah. And when that occurs, these things can fly. And so if there's one thing that's bullish about gold is that the relationship between interest rates and inflation are now getting inverted again. Mm -hmm. And that inversion historically has been very positive for these things. Right. So that, that, that's much more interesting to me than uh, we're not going to use dollars to go down the store or any of those kind of far, far, far and wide type of theories. I think uh, gold is an economic thing. And when it economically makes sense, it runs. And when it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, after the drop in, oh, uh, in 2001, you know, the crash there gold had a nice five-year run and then uh, in 2008 um, uh, it had a nice run into 2012 so we just had a crash in uh, 2020 it's not against the law that it could have another uh, good period here as we come out of these crashes we must obviously do a lot of inflationary things right yeah and I, there's one thing that i look at and i don't think i don't ever hear anybody talking about it maybe they don't look at it but i you know, there are a billion and a half people in India who, and they're lovers of gold, um, and rightfully so. And, and I think that if they can get that economy going, I think that could be very supportive uh, for gold. Um, in any event, uh, it hasn't happened yet, but it's something that's, that's very long term. All right, yeah. what's next here? Morgan Stanley, we're going to go with the brokers. And the brokers are just like the banks. They've had a very big run. Yeah, again, I, you know, again, with challenging highs. My, my brother used to work for Morgan Stanley. He's retired mm -hmm. from Morgan Stanley. And um, 
I think that, uh, you know, we're at a, at a level right now that, uh, that we've always had trouble getting through this high 70, uh, low 80 area. This is a monthly, so we're all the way back to uh, 05 here. You can see where we may get challenged here. Um, so again, I think, um, you know, if you're in it and you, you've stayed in it here, I think there are, I think to take your profit here and to, to move to something uh, uh, with a little bit more upside potential may be good. Maybe maybe keep some of it if you're, you know, if you're looking for if you're dealing with a balanced portfolio. But I think there are other places to go. Um, you're thinking. Well, I, I just been you know I listen to everybody and then I come to my own conclusions. Yeah. Um, I was listening to Larry Williams do something, and I was listening to Tom McClellan of the McClellan uh, Oscillator. These guys are old timers, and they've seen a lot of different uh, scenarios. And they were thinking that uh, you know we're a little bit on the extended time here in April, and mm -hmm. April may very well be a time frame where we hit a. Uh, a little bit of a peak and you know these stocks that have had a good run like uh morgan stanley the high has been 86 and we're not at 86 right now mm -hmm. and um so uh, and i'm looking at the moving averages down at 60 mm -hmm. and I, I look at the moving average on a lot of these stocks and they're way underneath now that's not a trading tool but it's a indicator that you're extremely far away from shore and uh, again, you know, uh, you do have sideline cash and you do have all these wonderful dynamics uh, going in, but you also have some reality. And that is that if things were to just slow the pace down, you know, something with the reopening gets stalled out, you know, J&J &J wasn't the ticket, but there could be other things mm -hmm. um, that the market in uh, May and June, you know, may take a pause to refresh. And technically it's screaming that it should. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, I, I keep on, um, I, I keep referring to Jake because I, I just, he's a guy that I've learned to follow for years and he's a friend and uh, that's never gotten in the way of, of me disagreeing with him at some points. But when he states things like he stated a few uh, last week, uh, mm -hmm. when he talked about uh, uh, this April period of time being one of the most consistent upward uh, times for the, uh, for the right. stock indexes, it's hard for me to, be a seller right here you know the, oh yeah 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 you know, the challenge yeah. of the high but uh you know we've you know i we, we've had a we, we've had a, you gotta look at the chart i don't care what history yeah i mean and, it's, and if it has a parabolic move that's a different scenario too i mean yeah. we've you know if we go to 42 to 4400 by the end of the month you know right. the, i mean you know that's right. uh, that's a pretty good parabolic move. I mean, you know, like I say, anything can happen, but at some point you have to make a decision, you know, whether you want to a sit tight or do something about it. And, and this is not your grandfather's uh, Morgan Stanley. This is a whole new. No. I mean, it's more of a bank than it is now. There's so many things that are so different in uncharted territory. And that's what makes it so tough. I mean, nobody uh, increases their money supply by 25% in a year. You know, nobody throws $21 trillion at, an eco at a worldwide economies in the last year. Right. You know, or uh, excuse me, the, 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 um, the rise in the markets have added 21 trillion of value if you look at all the stock markets around the world. So, you know, this is a wild time, let's face it. And the, uh, some of these technical numbers are getting very wild as well, as you would imagine, right? Yeah. Well, uh, this, this next one, isn't this a, um, uh, what do they call that? A infrastructure play, Cleveland? Yeah, Coast? this is this is the one that is, uh, I think they mine iron ore, if I, 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 kind of, I looked it up, if I can remember. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, this is one where, because, you know, when, whenever I think of infrastructure, of course, the big argument now is that infrastructure is much more than just roads and uh, bridges. But it still is mainly roads and bridges, and and even when you're building broadband, you're building towers and and uh, and so on. Uh, there's a lot of use for iron and 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 so on. And so even though we've had a big move here, you've got a lot of you've got a lot of uh, of action. Uh, a lot of people believing that this may be uh, um, a move that's coming. And I, I said check them. I wrote here check the monthly because I wanted to make sure. Uh, that you see the potential here. Um, okay, yeah. I mean, this like looks like a, yeah. a huge move that we're, we, we've just come from. And, and it has yeah. been relatively from, from 10 to 20. But look at this. I mean, this, this is the one, this is the stock that I thought, I'm really glad I'm doing the show today because I never would have looked at this. This is something that I'm going to be keeping <laughs> my eye on. There's a number of things, that a number of lines that I'll be drawing 
somewhere in this area. This is the kind of move where you could, um, a very few times uh, am I a proponent of, of, adding, uh, of adding to a position. I, I like to take the bulk of my positions right from the beginning at, at a breakout. And you can see um, we have a, that, that's, that signal here that we talked about that led to this move. We, had a, we have one here that failed followed by another one that succeeded. Um, I'd love to see something in here like that. Uh, but you know, you also, and, and I'm, I'm sure you're about to say this even if I don't, but this this rounding type of a, this double yeah. bottomish type of look, yeah. there's a lot of potential here. And yeah. you know, if you've missed every other move, uh, this is may, one you may want to keep your eye on. What about OIH uh, and put it on a monthly like you just did? And uh, someone was saying this one has a ton of potential, and this is in the oil services and stuff like that. Yeah, same same kind of thing. I mean, look at that. Look at this high at 14, 1400. Oh, oh my God. I, 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 listen, if you can get that person's name, I'll, I'll send them a uh, simple trading plans face mask because here is my signal right here. Mm -hmm. Here is the signal against the double bottom. You had a test. You took out all these previous highs of seven or eight months, is this? Yes. And you have a very short risk compared to the potential here. Uh, a buyer here would have already been out of their, their um, you would have measured this body and taken some of your position out at a, at a again, I like to play this as a, um, as a scalp and a long term. And you've had the rest half going for what I call lewd and lascivious, because yeah, well, thank you, whoever this is, uh, because you've already gotten a signal here. Now, of course, you can't take it here. You need a, a new signal, but this or this grabs my attention. Where where where, uh, where you see this right here? In fact, um, anywhere closer to this, I, I may be seeing myself taking a very minor position, uh, because again, um, it's not a good idea to get into things late. But when we've got this kind of potential, it may not be very late compared to the, uh, the possibilities. Yeah. Um, boy. Well, we know uh, Freeport McBurn is going to look uh, pretty much the same as Cleveland Cliffs from the standpoint of it had a huge run, but it's got a lot of potential if you look at the longer term graph. Let's go to DocuSign to close out, uh, D-O-C-U. This yeah. is the one that I've been using with my uh, account openings here and mm -hmm. there. Why do you use this as an account opening? No, no, I'm saying when I uh, oh. go to the bank and I'm, I'm opening up a new account or whatever, they send me the doc the documents by doc. Oh, yes. No, you're, you're signing it. And, you're, and, and now they make it look pretty. It used to be horrible. Yeah. Now, I, I wish I, uh, my, my brothers used to say, I used to practice my signature when I was a kid to make yeah. sure I was impressive if I ever became a CEO. And, and uh, <laughs> all I'm doing is signing checks to everybody. Um, but again, I, 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 I mentioned this again, when you see this choppiness like this, you know, even in a, you see a nice uh, move here. This is a tradable commodity. I mean, a tradable stock in this case. You see the signal here that I talked about. You have another mm -hmm. one here, which is a little bit less. Here's another one. Uh, hesitation followed by a movement through the eight. Uh, you've got another one here, another one here, another one here. So it's a lot of trades going on in, in a choppy market like this. And of course, I mean, from a general standpoint, if you're holding this, um, you're right in nowhere's land here. Um, I think as more deals get done, I don't think the, uh, the, uh, the folding of many uh, restaurants and other businesses during, um, uh, you know, and other professional organizations has helped dock you. But um, I think any kind of a comeback, uh, look, this is the future, paperless, paperless world. Yeah. Um, so and 180, 180 looks like it's a definite uh, support zone. Yeah, no question. And um, so uh, they tried to hit it. They tried to hit it. And, uh, you know, again, the valuation was the whole problem here. They can't figure out how much you want to pay for this business. You know? Yeah. And, and uh, you know, this is not a stock, I, I think, to go one way or the other, unless you already have. But, um, you know, unless you, you, kept, you wanted to buy against all of this. But, um, you know, if where it is right now, I think you got to look and see. Yeah, they, according to the screen, they are losing money still. So that's the problem. But uh, right around this 200 area, 180 area, you know, that seems to be yeah. about as bad as it should get. If it starts breaking underneath there, you know, there's not a whole lot of uh, 
there's not a whole lot of support if we, if we break under that area. Yeah, well, I don't know a pot stock that's not losing. There's plenty out there with this if, if, if that's losing, that's lo not, you know, it's making money. Yeah. Well, uh, a lot of them are losing money. Well, Norm, we're at the top of the hour. Why don't uh, you reintroduce yourself and you have some special offers you want to extend to people, the disciplined trader. A lot of great stuff to learn uh, with your group. And uh, let's uh, make sure people know how to get a hold of you. Uh, yes, my, um, again, uh, I think if you stop in, if you like some of the way I've analyzed this, you may want to take a look at um, uh, simpletradingplans.com. The disciplinedtrader.com is the main site that, had for 20 years uh, before the internet started, <laughs> the discipline trader, the discipline trader.com. If you've got mental and emotional challenges that you need to manage, that's getting in your way of performing, then uh, it's um, it, it's probably best that you um, that you look into uh, what I have at the discipline trader.com. If you like some of the technical analysis that I've, I've mentioned, especially when I'm looking at some of these breakouts and, and, and the triggers, what I call that the loaded gun trigger. And if you go to simple trading plan, simple trading plans.com, that's the trading plan that we're featuring now uh, with this particular trigger. And I wanted to give you a hundred dollars off if you want it, 100 STP. So it's 100 STP, which stands for simple trading plan. So if you use that code 100 STP, you're welcome to $100 off the price. So again, simpletradingplans.com. Jim, you, they call you the option professor for a reason and you've again proven it. <laughs> Thank you, Norm. Always a pleasure. You know, I was uh, listening to Charlie Munger and he was saying, you know, the key to being good at this stuff can be uh, knowing the edge of your competency, uh, mm -hmm. accepting deferred gratification and having a simple plan. And those are seem to be some of the goals of the disciplined trader. So it kind of made it, you know, when I heard it, I thought about you on that. And so, uh, you know, well, I think it'd be very worthwhile for people to investigate what you could bring to the table. Well, I appreciate it. I think what, just one other thing, this is the stock that I mentioned before, MedMen Enterprises. If you're looking for a pot stock that, that has some, you notice how it's holding on to this green band. Um, and you notice how it's, where, what happens when it gets tickled. Um, this, was a, this was a tripling move, a doubling move from where it was recently. Uh, I just think that, uh, that this is, a, this is a, pot, a stock to watch. We haven't come down to the base. You can see how sensitive this is. They own a lot of real estate. It's one of the bigger ones. Uh, if you're looking for something to follow, this is the one I would follow. Excellent. And uh, for optionprofessor.com, we have a newsletter that we put out every week. It's free of charge. We cover all the different markets, stocks, bonds, commodities, you name it. And we give you an update on where we think uh, they look, how they look, and where they might be going. So go to optionprofessor.com, put your email in, and we'll make sure you get the free uh, newsletter each and every week. Uh, right now, I'm going to turn it back over to David. Uh, Norm, always good to talk to you. We'll be doing it again soon, I'm sure. Excellent. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, lots of good info today. So just a quick, quick reminder, be sure to subscribe to Timing Research on uh, YouTube and your favorite podcast app. You can also go to timingresearch.com to get access to the recording of this show as soon as I can get it posted and as well as any past uh, shows. And I uh, just want to thank my guests again for today, uh, Norman Hallett of thedisciplinetrader.com and the option professor of optionprofessor.com. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>